So far we have opened files and now we would like to see how we can read data from these files. As you remember, we argued that files are sequentially organized. So a for loop is well suited to really run over all the lines and read the data out of it. So this makes use of the sequential structure of this file. What is important though is that within a file, each fi line has an end of line. And this one we have to, probably in the most cases, we have to delete. We can do so using the string method strip. Strip deletes unnecessary blanks and spaces at the very beginning and at the end of each string. So give it a try. It's showtime. We are going into our notebook. So you see with our with statement we can first open our file. We have stored this lorem ipsum file. You have to download this file as well otherwise this um, notebook won't work. Now you have to put this notebook and this lorem ipsum.txt file into the same directory. What you can see here, we open this file and then with our for loop we go line by line through our file and then we print out the line. Let's do it. And yeah, first success, we do have several lines, lorem ipsum, dolor, sit, ahmed and so on and so on. However, the print puts a line break at the end as well. So now we have double line breaks, which leads to the result that we have empty lines in between. So what can we do? Actually, here the string method strip is quite useful. As argued before, strip deletes at the end and at the beginning of each string superfluous um, tabs and spaces and line breaks. So what we do in here is actually the same progr program we just added this statement where we say line equals to line dot strip. Yeah, so we delete all these superfluous line breaks. And if we rerun it, you can see now a text without these empty lines in between. Output the contents of a file twice. Let's give it a try. So you see again, we open and then we have doubled our four line in file, line equals to line strip, print line, and copied it to the very end. And to mark the beginning and the end, we have entered additional statement, print first round, print second round. So what's the result? Actually, the first round goes fine. We have our the same text as we have had before. However, the second round, nothing happens. So what has gone wrong? If you have a file, there is always what we call read cursor or read pointer, which goes through this uh, file character by character up to the very end. And at the very end, you know, if we have gone through all these lines the first time, the read pointer is at the end of the file. And if you then start reading again, it's still at the end of the file and basically it stops directly because he is, it, has, it has reached the end of file mark. That's why no context is given out a second time. So you have to be aware that uh, all this text is, uh, can be just read once if you do not manipulate this read pointer. So actually it's a good uh, habit to always first go through the complete file, read this file into a permanent structure like a list or a dictionary or whatever you like, and then continue working on the list. Do not continue to work in the file later on. Actually, there are other methods to read this uh, the content of the file. You can read the complete text in one go if you use this method read lines. 
is a method designed for files. So what is the uh, output? So as you can see, we have a list. Yeah, you see these square brackets. And then you can see the text as a string, first element, which ends with these backslash n, which is simply this line break as argued before. Yeah. Comma, second element of this list going up to here. And again, we have this um, line break. Uh, so the content is actually the same, but it's now stored in a list. And if you would like to get rid of this line break, you have to go over this list with a for loop and do this deletion. Let's come to our exercise. So again, if you would like to give it a try by your own, stop the video right here. And later on, you can compare your solution with ours. So here's an example solution of exercise one. To simplify my life, I've basically, basically copied one of the cells above and included it in here. And of course, now first thing I have to do is I have to replace the file name, which is now numbers to dot text. Let's rerun it. And you can see now all the numbers are printed out. Now, one thing is within a file, there's only strings as a data structure, as a data type. So what we have to do if you would like to arithmet arithmetically add these uh, numbers, we have to first convert it, this string, into an integer. So this goes, as you know, with this int line. Now we have to sum up. And for that, we simply need a variable. That's what we have done before as well when we um, added up the values in a list. So we can say sum uh, file equals to zero to have an initial value. And then we simply say, okay, sum file plus equals to line. And we would like to print out this sum file as well. So let's give it a try. And you directly see there is a second number, which is our sum. You can calculate, okay, zero and one is quite easy. One plus two is three, plus three is six. Seems to work fine. And if you go to the very end, you see the final result is 5050. So you know all these numbers from zero to 100 sum up to 5050. So what have you learned? You now can read data from files. Always remember, there is this line break, which eventually has to be deleted. And within this file, the data type is string. So even if you have a list, a file of numbers, you have to first convert these individual numbers into integers um, so that you can really start computing with it.